clergy and people of the Episcopal Diocese of the Virgin Islands, and to all our virtual listeners and viewers and readers, we bring you another Lenten message of hope as we journey toward our joyful Easter celebration. During this journey, we are hearing good news about the future of COVID-19. The good news is not only that help is on the way in the form of various vaccines, but there is also coming a time when those who have been obedient to the word and the messages proclaimed by the health officials and scientists may experience a time when this pandemic will no longer be a threat to human civilization. This should give us occasion for rejoicing even in Lent, as we believe that there is coming a time when we will be able to worship God as our traditions dictate and fellowship with each other without fear of becoming infected with a threat, life-threatening disease. I am the Right Reverend E. Ambrose Gums, the Episcopal Bishop of the Diocese of the Virgin Islands. The prophet Jeremiah in chapter 31 says, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with my people. This is the covenant that I will make after those days. I will write my law on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. In the midst of this present pandemic, the people of God are finding ways to proclaim the good news of salvation and are encouraging others to look to the author of life where we can find a refuge at this present time. As we continue our journey through Lent and COVID-19, may we see a parallel in the outcome. We know that after a period of austerity, we will come to a time of rejoicing. That progress should encourage us to persevere while we are experiencing the challenges or self-denials of the present days, knowing that we are heading to a better time. The sooner we recognize our situation and adjust to the realities that will enable us to remain obedient, the better off we will be now and in the future. By now we are well familiar with Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That gives hope. The prophet Jeremiah already gave us the assurance of God's promises. When he told us in chapter 29, I know the plans I have for you to give you prosperity and the future for which you hoped. So it is for us to stand on God's promises while abiding in God's word, knowing that hope will not disappoint us. It is by keeping God's word and following the instructions of the present time that will enable us to overcome the adversary and be victorious. We have the assurance of God's promises as children of the covenant, and it is through our active faith that we will overcome. Therefore, everything we do from now onward must be done with a certain assurance that the God who has covenanted with us will not forsake us in our moments of need. Even when the trials and the, temp the tempests of life are raging around us, God's covenanted promises still stand you see, when we walk with the Lord in the knowledge of God's word, and when we obey that word, God will guide us, guard us, protect us, and keep us. It will only be a matter of time before we see the salvation or experience the deliverance of God. And if Jesus is our model, we will understand that when we learn to wait upon God, or to put it another way, when we learn obedience through what we suffer, knowing that our suffering will only last for a night, 
but our morning of joy will come. Scripture informs us that we must learn obedience through what we suffer, meaning some lessons are to be learned as we go through this pandemic. Right now, most of us are experiencing many trials and tribulations, but through our humility, we will be found worthy to receive the promised inheritance. One's humility, however, is not only walking around with a humble spirit, but also having a sense of service to those around us and among us who are not able to give back the same service to us. Humility requires us to die to ourselves, to let go of our own self-importance and clothe ourselves in the righteousness of God, thus finding ourselves equipped to do service in our communities. Please be mindful that the one we are called to imitate said that whoever serves must follow and where he is, there his servants will be also. If we are going to inherit the reward of well done, good and faithful servant, then we must serve others. That is the church's mission. This period of time offers a great opportunity for the church to rediscover her true mission to the world. It is during times like these that the world is hungry for the living bread. May we lift up that living bread for the world to see by the examples of our lives. When the church reaches out to her community, near or far, people will be drawn into the kingdom. The time has surely come when the church is called to stand upon the promises and to live into the covenant relationship. The mission and ministry to which we were commissioned in baptism. Amen.